we use a greatest common factor all the time when we do our factoring. Um, the greatest common factor is going to be the biggest factor that is common to both um, numbers or both monomials, depending on what you are factoring. Um, one way to find the greatest common factor is to list all your factors. So I'll just do one that way. We have 15. Our factors, we have 1 and 15, 3 and 5, and that's about all that fits into 15. Your factors of 30, you have 1 and 30, 2 and 15, 3 and 10, 4, 5, and 6, and those are all of our factors for 30. So the common factors, well, these two have a few common factors. 1 is a common factor, 3 is a common factor, and 5, and 15. So when we want the greatest common factor, well, we've got four common factors. The greatest one is going to be the biggest number that fits into both 15 and 30, and in this case, it's a 15. So 15 is the greatest common factor between 15 and 30. Um, that way sometimes takes a little bit of time, so if, um, if you don't want to do that, I totally understand. Um, and actually, I would like you to be able to come up with the greatest common factor in your head. It will save you a lot of time. So this next example, we have 28 and 32. So if we can think, what numbers fit into both 28 and 32? Well, 2 fits into both. That's a common factor. But is there a bigger number than 2 that will fit into 28 and 32? Um, 4 fits into both. And so you just kind of go through your factors and see what the biggest one is. In this case, I think 4 is the biggest number that fits into both 28 and 32. So our greatest common factor, also abbreviated as the GCF, is 4. All right, we have a couple examples down here that involve variables. That's all right. Um, what we're going to look at is we'll just go through it piece by piece. So first you have the numbers. We have a 6 and we have a 12. So what is the biggest factor of both 6 and 12 or the biggest number that fits into both? And in this case, it's going to be a 6. 6 fits into 6 and 6 fits into 12. Now we're going to go through each variable. We have an x squared and an x cubed. So the question is, how many x's do they have in common? Well, x squared is an x times an x, and x cubed is three of them. Well, you can see that they both have two x's. They both don't have three, only this one over here has three x's. So because they both have two x's, that x squared is the most that they have in common. Um, now we look at the y's. We have a y to the first power and a y squared. How many x's do they have in common? They both have a y, but they both don't have a y squared. y squared would be too big. So we need just a y in our GCF. So our greatest common factor is 6 x squared y. You just go through the number, then each variable to kind of build your GCF. All right, last example, we have 24 and we have 18. So first, get the number of your GCF. Biggest number that fits into 24 and 18, I believe, is 6. Now, how many m's do they have in common? We have m to the third and m squared. Um, the most that they have in common is m squared, so that's part of our GCF. And then n to the fifth and an n to the first power. Well, they both don't have five n's, that's too many, but they both have that end of the first power, so end of the first power will be part of your GCF.